Hey friends, long time no see. I am fresh off the road from Poshfest. I'm going to recap it, so stay tuned. Hey friends, it is Stephanie from Three Queens Resale. And if you are new here, where have you been all your life? So I am a full-time reseller and on this channel, I share just my reselling journey. And friends, it has been a crazy journey. So I thank you guys all for sticking with me and, and joining me on this ride. I just got back from Posh Fest like an hour ago. I got home, I went to my daughter's game. She was cheering a game. I got there during the fourth quarter, the last eight minutes. So I got to see her and then we came home and now I have unpacked and I'm here to kind of recap while everything is still fresh in my head. So a week ago, I was down bad, like super sick, not feeling well and I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm not going to Posh Fest. I would have been looking forward to it since it was announced. And just the thought of going and, cause I drove, it's four and a half hours from Indy to Nashville. So I drove and just the thought of like driving by myself, I was really scared that I might have some type of medical incident on the road that I couldn't handle. And so friends, I, reached out to Posh Fest, Posh, Poshmark. It was too late to like sell my ticket or even give my ticket to someone else. I guess, well, no, because you had to show ID to get the items. But um, so I just kind of prayed on it. Um, I finished like around the steroids I was on. I was feeling a lot better. Um, than I was, but still kind of shaky. But around Monday, I was like, I'm just gonna go. I've already spent the money. If if I don't feel good, I'll just lay down in my room and then come back. But um, so I went and you guys, I gotta say, I am so, so happy that I did. So I'm going, I learned so much and experienced so much. And friends, I did take breaks and I did, go lay down and I still feel like I got a lot out of this posh fest and it is actually just what I needed to kind of jumpstart myself, refocus and drive through the rest of the year. So because I've had some crazy like headache situation going on, if you're new here, I think I mentioned it a few videos back that um, I get these headaches and I thought it was, I had a sinus infection and I thought, and I still have a lot of head sinus pressure. Um, but I get these headaches when I, my heart rate goes up. Like if I try to run on the treadmill or if I'm at the bins and I try to lift like something heavy and walk with it a long way or even like to my car, like two bags of stuff from the bins, like I get a bad headache. And so they thought it was just like sinus issues. I finished all the medicine and the pressure is still there. The headaches have diminished quite a bit, but I'm still having to take decongestants nonstop. Otherwise, like that pressure comes back. So we're going to do some uh, head CT this week coming up to kind of figure it out. But because of that, I was feeling really sick all of August. And August was my worst month as a reseller since I decided to like be full time. So in four years, August was my first month. We had the lowest amount of revenue, the lowest amount of sales. I was really frustrated with myself because I wasn't able, we were down on everything, sales, sourcing, and listing. So part of it could have been because Poshmark was, and eBay were slow and we're still creeping at a slow, summer slowdown. Um, after talking to lots of people at Posh Fest, they had a slow August too, but I also, I was slow. Like I was needing to take like four hour naps a day. I was laying down a lot. Um, I wasn't going to the bins. I just what have not felt well. And, you know, and I still am not a hundred percent. And so 
that impacted my business and friends I was I said to my husband like oh a week ago I'm like I think I'm gonna quit and get go back to work like for someone else I just got so that lasted for like 30 seconds but <laughs> but the, I just got so like emotional about not performing and that when you work for someone else and you don't perform you can kind of coast when you don't feel good. Like when I was a teacher and I kind of didn't feel good, I could give the kids some like bullshit project to work on and give them participation points and kind of phone it in. Um, but when you work for yourself, you can't bullshit yourself. You got to actually do the work so that you get paid. So after a pep talk from my husband and starting to feel marginally better, I went. And so I'm going to go through just like an overview of the two days. And then I'll have different videos to break down what I got from my sessions that I went to. So first of all, I'm sure you've seen it all over TikTok, Instagram, all of the places, the swag was swagging. But Poshmark did their big one with Poshfest. This is the best one I have been to. Um, first of all, it was in Nashville, Tennessee, so I could drive. I live in the Midwest and in central Indiana, four and a half hours away. This is the first one that I could personally drive to. So when I started out, I set my navigation to Nashville and then I put in stop. I put in Goodwill Outlet. There were five Goodwill Outlets between here in Nashville. And I did not get to stop at them all, but I will do a haul at the for the ones that I did in an, another video. But um, so I got to drive because when you fly, you have to be careful. You can't bring a bunch of stuff, you know, because um, you have bag weight limits and all that. But I didn't have any restrictions. So I took my time. I drove there. My husband got a little frustrated with me because it was taking me so long to get there because I kept stopping. But we, I got there Wednesday, so I did not go. There were a ton of pre-parties. Um, Posh Mark had reached out to me um, and a lot of other Poshers to host a pre-party on Wednesday night, like an event and anything from a rooftop party to like a line dancing to a trip to the bins, like you could have done anything. I had to decline the invitation to to host because, like I said, I had not been feeling well and I was not going to commit myself to planning a party in a city that I was unfamiliar with because that's not how I like to do things. Um, but a lot of people did go to the different um, posh like pre-parties and I even spoke to a few of my friends that hosted them. And they were like, it was wonderful. Poshmark gave them money to um, buy food or appetizers or whatever and to rent the space. And then they got a little gift card or something for being a host. And so the write off as people came in, there was something to do to connect them to uh, other poshers. Um, then Thursday you get was day one of the actual conference. And when you register and check in, you got um, your bag and it has all kinds of goodies in it that um, I will show you. So um, a notebook, which I always bring my own notebook. So this will just get thrown in my bag of like little notebooks. Um, I have a box of stuff and then it is um, in Tal Dallas, in Nashville. So we got these cute little pit Music City pins, um, a grippy for our phones, lots of like stickers, um, cards for your thank you cards. We got this package of Halloween um, poly mailers and thank you cards. Um, oh, these socks. And that was all that was in the denim tote, I think. I'm pretty sure. So, and then after you, so after you registered, you go on down to breakfast. And the breakfast, um, the first day, 
was great. They had biscuits and gravy, like sausage, eggs, and fruit. If you want oatmeal, if you wanted something lighter. I remember the last one I went to was in Houston. And the first day they had a bunch of fruit and like danishes. And I, I was very vocal about, I was like, where are, is the hot food? Like there was, I don't eat cold food for breakfast. So, um, I was glad that there was hot food. And then that is when I met a group of ladies and we kind of sat down there were all first time poshers because you could just sit and eat breakfast and like take your time and meet people um and the breakfast is included in that actually both breakfasts and lunches were included but one of the things that they encouraged you to do on your lanyard so here is my um lanyard and it has your closet name I encourage them, and if Poshmark, if you li are here, if you're listening, next time, next, for next year, put the Q our QR codes on here. Is there a way for you to print and do that? I'm sure there is. You guys are all smart people. Work on that. But they had this button station, and you got buttons that applied to you. Like, so, um, if you've done lives, you get this one. Um, pa, I just got the, have we all got the Posh Fest Nashville one, um, full-time reseller. So they had a part-time reseller as well. Um, Posh Mentor, if you like mentor new poshers. And I feel like that, I'm not like an official Posh Mentor with like, with like Poshmark, but I feel like I mentor people all the time to get started. Let me know in the comments if you think I do or not. Um, and then just this fashion your dreams is like the um slogan of the conference and then posture sense and i never filled mine in but since 2018 friends and then i am a uh gold star like a posh ambassador too so those are just kind of like different fun buttons that you could put on your lanyard so that you could like just like a jumping off pop point like for conversation with people um, so then of course we get to the main stage and we start off with the state of the posh union. Manish comes out, he talks, um, his nothing like, well, one, one tidbit that he did drop, um, but just talks about pop, the business in the, in general. I, I felt like it was very similar to things that he said in the past. Only, and I, this is a quote that I'm, that he said, and I, I've, it's just kind of resonated in my mind, and I've been thinking about it. Um, as people, we, there is a line of fear and greed, like, that's where we are, like, in our entrepreneurial journey, like, the fear to get started, and greed like we want to get as much money as we can and so in the middle there is that like sweet spot that piece so we want to and i forgot what he called the middle but we want to be in that middle where we're not afraid that we're not going to make any money or have opportunities but we're not so greedy that once we get them that we can't share and he said that and that kind of led into that they were revisiting the pricing structure um, in the future. Uh, so I think there is going to, I'm he pretty much said, there's going to be a change in the fee structure um, from the 20%. We don't know what that is, what that looks like. No details were given. If they were, I missed them, but they weren't said during, cause I was like, what? <laughs> they were not said during that thing, that his session. Um, and I did get to take my annual picture with Manish. He's just such a down-to-earth person. He introduced me to his wife, who also seemed down-to-earth. Um, I'm sure he doesn't know me from anybody else that was there, but he makes you feel like he does. And I, ju I just think that is super cool that he is even out, like, mingling at, like, the Paul posh fest and in the halls and you know popping in like with the rest of us um so then after the state of the posh um address they did give out three rollo printers um 
I, of course, did not win one because I would show it to you, but I also didn't care because I have a printer and uh, I didn't want to have to program another one. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, after that, after the state of the uh, union, there was a Let's Grow Together panel where people came up and just talked about um, they asked some questions about growing their Parshmark business. It was really like general. And for me, for me, as a person who has been to Poshfest multiple times, um, I think this is a setback for new poshers because a lot of new poshers are going, they want just like most people, they think they are paying to come there and get like, if you do A, B, C, D, E, F, G in this order, you are going to make a million dollars on Poshmark. And that's not what it is. You kind of have to listen to the people's stories and their processes and what they have to share and kind of take nuggets and, and cobble together like how you want to proceed. It's not like direct advice but more like aspirational and inspirational and I don't think people want to pay for that I think they want do this right like this do your listings like this buy your items here and list like this list at this time of day and so I think people get frustrated with posh fest because that's not really what this is so after that um we had lunch and then, um, which was a box lunch and it was cold lunch meat and posh fest. I'm going to forgive you because you gave us a coach bag, but a lot of people don't, a lot of women do not eat cold lunch meat. There were a lot of pregnant women there and you cannot, I mean, I have, I'm not pregnant, <laughs> God, but I have not had cold lunch meat since my first pregnancy. I don't eat cold deli meat. And a lot of people don't. So lunch was a bummer for me. Um, I did eat my chips and part of like two bites of my cookie, but I was like starving by the end of the day because I didn't have a good lunch. Um, then we went to breakout sessions. So I missed breakout sessions the first day. It was my own fault because I got in line for these hats. So Poshfest Posh was all about customization, you know, customizing your lanyard customizing your shirt so they had seven different shirts that you could pick from so i picked this pattern and then they made it there on the spot for you so it was all about like they kept saying like choose your own adventure um so i stood in line for my trucker hat for them to customize and my it's once again not Poshmark's fault, my choice. I chose this adventure and the hat situation just was disorganized. Um, God bless those people. Um, they were much better day two, but by that time I'd already got my cat. So that you picked out a color trucker hat, then you picked out patches and pins and chains. I knew that I was not really ever going to wear this. It was just more like going to be decor for this office. And so I picked out these patches. Secondhand style looks good on you. The boot and the Nashville Poshmark, just so I had this keepsake item. But all of us poshers got to design our own hat. And hopefully you'll see other people's hats like on Instagram. And I mean, they're super cute. People were super creative. As you can see, I was not. Um, so because I waited in line an hour and a half for this, <laughs> um, I missed the breakout sessions, um, that they offered. And then I went to get a coffee. What did I do? Oh, so breakout block three breakout. What I did because it was already started is I went to go watch some of the ladies that I had met. They had live sell selling, like people went live there at Posh Fest. And so I went to go like cheer on some of my friends that I had met, my new PFFs, and um, watch them do their live sales. And I also uh, went to learn about um, the new Posher AI. And I am going to do... Uh, a video on that this week because that is new and I want to be the first to get it out but I also so I think so we got for trying posture AI you got a pair of Rothy's I think 
the plan was to give you a pair of Rafis and you do Posture AI with the Rafis. Because at first they were just giving out random Rothy's to people <laughs> and I was like no I'm a size nine I want a size nine and I was like trying on the Rothy's so I must have I don't know if I started something or what but so because I, I don't have a pair I've never had a pair I've sold a few pair and so I um wanted a pair for myself so these are brand new and they are the round toe Mary Jane's I don't even know what they retail for. I will put it on the screen. But so the, you're supposed to get your Rothy's and then just use this like um, the new Posture AI um, listing. I don't even think that's what it's called. I'm going to make another video about it. But it's this thing where you like take your picture of the item and it loads all the da data in the listing. Okay, like after, based on the pictures. Super cool. Um, but I did not use my Rothy's for that. Um, other people did. Other other postures already have their Rothy's listed. There are going to be amazing deals on Rothy's. So if you need some, because we all got a pair. So if you need some, go get some. Okay, so what I did use my, uh, they gave us some, some items that you could um, use to try the posture AI on. And so they had just like went to some Goodwill and picked up some things. They had all types of things like Lululemon, whatever. But I got this and I tried it out on. And so I will do that. And this was just once you got, so this is listed in my closet. The pictures look like crap because they had like purple and pink strobe lights in there. So I'm going to redo it in my, when I make my video um, to show you how to use it. So that was really a good use of my time because not only did I get these Rothy's, but I also got an, learned to use the new posture like AI listing tool. So then after that, we all went back to the main room and this is where a lot of people left. Because it was from 345 to 405, the future of secondhand fashion with um, the CEO of Benny, who happens to be from in the Indianapolis area. And I met her at Posh Fest two years ago. And she was talking about, oh, no, do I have my thing uh, here? I'm going to put this here so you guys can like um, use like use the QR code to find out more. But Benny is an iOS like app, like a, a Chrome extension. And you can load it to your computer. And then when you decide like, hey, I want some new UGG boots, you can, it's gonna, if you go to the UGG site, what it's Benny is gonna do um, is search secondhand sites for those boots for you so that you can have an opportunity to buy them secondhand for a much better price than brand new. So, uh, but she talked about the future of reselling and how it's gonna continue to, it's it's growing uh, much faster than buying retail. And one statistic that she said that boggled my mind is that currently here on earth, right now, there is enough clothing to completely clothe the next six generations of people. That's how much clothing, textile waste, clothing that we have on this planet. So we need to be more sustainable with fashion. And so, and then that is when, so the future of that um, is that more Poshmark is working with different retailers, one being Coach, um, that are putting kind of like bar codes in their items to um, so that when you scan it, all the information on that garment comes up and Poshmark is working with like items to be more sustainable, like to, to have a place for their second hand. I know as Poshers, we all got frustrated when 
Poshmark like, like Patagonia, was it Patagonia or Free People or some bigger like brands like have a Poshmark closet where they sold their stuff. We were all very frustrated with that. We've kind of gotten used to it. But that is when at the end of that presentation when she was talking about how Coach had the codes, that is when it was announced that we were all getting this bag. And this is... I'll have to put it on the screen. Mine is super cute. So it's black and it has this tortoise shell um, detail. Um, and this is from the Coach Topia line. And so I will take the stuffing out to show you. I'm going to give this to one of my kids for a Christmas gift. So I looked these up on their website. I think that they're a $300 value and we got them for free. But inside there is a barcode in which that you could scan for all the information about the bag to come up so that after you're done with your little bag um, and it does come with two different straps so it's called the micro wavy dinky and here's the price tag yes so they gave us all one I saw this color, brown, a bone color, and pink, I think. But so they come with the strap, crossbody strap, and a little tortoise shell strap. I'm not sure if everybody got the tortoise shell or just me because I had the black one. But um, so that was like a surprise. We were all super surprised. We got our coach bags and that was the end of day one. So because this video is already 30 minutes long, I'll make another one. But um, so far I have found, I thought that Poshfest was just an amazing experience. And you know, not not because I got this because I'm not ever going, or these, I'm super, I'm more excited about these than this because I'm not going to use this. This will be a gift for one of my kids. But um, I think the name of this, this Posh Fest has been like um, creativity and customization because you got to customize your hat, you got to customize your day as in what sessions that you went to. You could even go to the secondhand saloon and customize your bag with different patches and things and people did really cute things with their bags. I wish I wouldn't have spent so much time here because I missed out. I mean, I love my customized hat, but I missed out on some other things because I did that. Um, but that, it, you know what? I'm just going to talk about day two real quick. So that way I won't have to edit two videos. Um, so then day two, um, so I was super exhausted. Day one was a super long day. I had, I, I, had such a headache, but I was glad that I stayed and got the fun little bag because I, the people who left actually got their bag the second day, but we didn't know that that was going to happen. Um, so day two, same thing, breakfast, hot breakfast. They had Tennessee sausage, which I'm a Midwest girl, so I love me some sausage and so homemade biscuits, eggs and sausage. They were so big. I was only able to eat half of it. Um, you know, visited, made more connections with people at breakfast. I went and got my customized t-shirts. Um, and then we went to the main stage to listen to the programming. And I'm trying to remember who. It was just a Let's Succeed Together panel. So once again, four different people talking about where they started, what... Um, they've done and how successful their business is. One of the people on the panel talked about how she goes live for 12 hours on Saturday. And I was like, Ugh. but, um, you know, it's just cute to hear, great to hear how other people approach things. They have these things um, called 60 second sound bites where you get to hear different postures talk about um, different things um what what they like about Poshmark and then they have the hackathon feature reveal and I am going to do a separate video on that because 
there's a lot and I'm using my phone to record this and I have all the notes on my phone. Um, and then, oh, then there was this whole thing on data, um, the ultimate storyteller and the different data that points, uh, they came on and talked about seven data points, um, to help promote your listings in the closet. I'll do a different video on that as well. Cause that is a whole, I, I have lots of notes on that. And then, um, oh, so then we had lunch which was much better. They did their big one with lunch. So first of all, they had some smoked Gouda mac and cheese. That was literally the best mac and cheese I've ever had in my life. I wanted to go back to her seconds, but I didn't want to be greedy. Um, so they had just meatloaf, brisket meatloaf, just like all the Southern comfort foods that you could imagine at this lunch. They had two different types of potatoes, salad, green beans, um, chicken pot pie, just like anything like Southern like comfort that you could think about as far as food was there. And then for dessert, there was lemon meringue pie and red velvet cake. So we were all like fat, full and sleepy at the end of lunch. But they totally made up for the box lunches the day before. Um, but then I was like, uh, like in a food coma. Um, but I went to the small business administration breakout session, which the small business administration is a federal, um, government entity. They talked a lot about microloans. We don't run our business doing loans. Um, but that's not to say we won't ever be in a situation to need a loan. Um, but one of the things that they talked a lot about ha was during COVID and knowledge is power friends. So that's why I'm sharing this during COVID, a person like me, I was not a full-time reseller during COVID. Um, so I wouldn't have been eligible. I could have gotten funds, but I didn't need to take money for during COVID because I was still teaching. So I'm not one to take things that I don't need. But now let's say we had another pandemic and it, like everything shut down or whatever. Because I am a full-time reseller, I fall into that category like um, Uber drivers, um, gig workers. So I am eligible for like that $600 extra. And so is my husband all those things that um, those people were getting. And one of the things that, and these were like people who work for the federal government who ran this section. Um, one of the things that they talked about is that our tax dollars, the taxes that we already pay in our, part of them are in this pot of money. So when there's a disaster and people get the assistance, it is the money that they've already essentially paid into it. Like we as tax money, money payers pay into it, which duh, I already knew that. But I think people get in their head like, oh, you're taking like from other people. No, it is. Those are your tax dollars working for you. So that's something to think about. Um, just same like with disability. If something like with my headache or whatever, I can't work and I'm going to have to be out. Um, there are programs through the Small Business Administration that I could be eligible for because I am a small business owner and I am protected um, in that way. So it seems like a lot of paperwork. Like they had all these, like I'm not one for paperwork, so I probably would never do it unless I really, really had to. But it was good information to hear and it did keep me engaged the whole session. Both of the speakers were very knowledgeable and very personable because sometimes when you talk to government people, the feds, they can like be kind of like, uh. but the both of these two people were knowledgeable and entertaining. Then I had to go get a coffee because I was, it was freezing cold in that room and I was like, had a food coma. So I went and got a coffee, went outside and warmed up a bit and then came back for block two, which I'm going to say, friends, is the most informative session that I have 
ever been to at a Posh Fest or probably any other conference in my life. And I was a teacher, so I went to lots of conferences and it was called Smart Selling Using AI to Decode Your Data. I am going to really, I am doing a different video on this. I actually like started practicing with it, but ba basically what she did in this um, breakout session is showed us how to download our seller reports, upload them to AI, and then ha ask AI to give us certain data points. For instance, what day of the week is most profitable for me? What day of the week do I... And it's different than what you actually think because when she was doing it with the data, like she downloaded somebody's data and and did it uh, like it was probably like a faux like data point you know like um but to see for me i have not been using data like to drive my my decisions and i want to do that more as a reseller like and sourcing and kind of break down like which brands really do sell the most for us and for the most amount of money not just like what i think but um what really what should i really be like looking and picking up and um she did several scenarios um and so i'm gonna practice and then i'm gonna show you guys that's what a good teacher does that's how you know you know it is that you can teach it to other people not ready to like share it, share it yet because i gotta practice some more but that was really informative and I feel like that is really going to uh, a positive way we can all use AI to move our business forward. Um, so we ended with a group photo of all of us, which, okay, whatever. Um, but just to try to get that many people in a photo is annoying to me, um, but they did it. And then your girl went back to her room, took a nap, and then got ready for this posh party. And it was so fun. It was so fun. It was hot in there. But we each got three free drinks. Um, I only drank one. And then I was on water because it was so hot in there. Um, but you got to engage with people in a more relaxed setting. Party, dance. We dance. We party. We. Um, another thing that they gave us. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to pause. At the the party, the ultimate posh party, um, they had a live band that was great. They sang all types of music. And I, I was expecting like country line dancing, but when we I got there, there was like Latin music. Like they kind of went through different eras. Like they had the Latin music, then they had like, you know, like Usher and like, and then like a, just all different, all something for everybody. But, um, so one of the things they had there were they had these um, artists that were taking picture, doing hand, doing like hand drawn watercolors of us like all like leaving Posh Fest. So you had to turn your back to them, and like then they drew they drew you like they took a picture and they drew you and they created a watercolor. Now this was not because my pose I had my drink up. And the peace sign, and she did not get my peace sign in, in my picture. And had I known they were going to do this, I would have worn a different dress. Because I just had like a little shift dress on, and it was white. So, but it was kind of cute. Like, um, and it's just like waving by to Posh Fest. And I thought that was just like a little, I love those little special touches at a party, like to make it more special. But all in all, you guys, I had a great time. And if I met you there and you're new to my channel, give me a follow, leave me, leave me a comment down below. Um, and it was just a great time. And I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm glad I went. I'm glad I went because it was actually the boost that I needed to, um, get out of my like funk that I've been in. I can't do anything about, um, not feeling well, but at least I'm feeling more positive about my Poshmark business and my reselling business. And um, I was inspired by a lot of the speakers and just a lot of the attendees. 
And I, hopefully I inspired a few people too, as we shared our stories. So I promise friends, it's going to take me a minute because you know I like to do my hauls and all that, but I am going to make some very good um, videos, informative videos about the breakout sessions that I went to and um, the hackathon and the tips that they shared about the data that they have um, on Poshmark. So if that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up, friends, and I will see you in the next one.